whether you want to immigrate to pursue a higher education or you want to work and settle abroad. There are two countries which are very famous, Canada and Germany. So this video would help you decide which country would suit you better because in this video we're going to discuss the two wonderful countries based on various factors like geography because it's very important to know the place where you want to immigrate about the education both elementary and the higher education we'll talk about the weather we'll also talk about immigration the opportunities on a higher level we'll talk about the people and the crime rate it's very important to know the place where you want to immigrate is it actually safe or not so we'll talk about that and then we'll also talk about the cost of living we'll pick certain cities in both the countries and try to compare which is more affordable so guys this video is going to be an epic and ultimate comparison between canada and germany from the perspective of an immigrant if you're interested stay tuned hey guys i'm shitanshu from dream abroad and i regularly upload useful videos like these so if you haven't subscribed this channel yet please consider subscribing also if you want to immigrate to canada and if you have any queries you can come over to Dream Abroad Canada Facebook group and also if you want to enjoy some fun moments, you can follow me at Instagram. My ID is Dreamers Abroad. Okay, let's start comparing these two wonderful countries based on their geography. It's very important to know the place where you want to immigrate. So we won't talk about the geography in detail, we'll just discuss few important points. So this is the world map, this is Canada and this is Germany. You can clearly see Canada is very huge. It is actually 28 times the size of Germany. But it might be strange for you to know that the population of Canada is less than half of the population of Germany. The population of Canada is around 37 to 38 million while that of Germany is around 80 to 81 million. If you immigrate to Canada, you can get the advantage because of its proximity to US. While if you immigrate to Germany, you can get the advantage because of its proximity with other European nations and UK. Some of the famous Canadian cities are Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, Ottawa, Edmonton, Calgary, while that in Germany are Berlin, Munich, Hamburg, Frankfurt and some other as well. Now, distance of Mumbai to Frankfurt is around 6500 kilometers, which means the direct flight takes around 9 hours, but if you want to travel from India to Canada, then a direct flight from Delhi to Toronto takes around 14 hours because this distance is much more. Okay, that being said, enough about geography, let's talk about the other important points as well. Okay, now talking about the people and the crime rate. It's very important to know where we want to live in our future, what kind of people live there, what language do they actually speak and is it actually safe to live there or not. So here we'll talk about different points about both the countries. Uh, we'll talk about the population, the population density. Uh, we'll talk about the life expectancy and also the official languages and then we'll move on to discuss the crime index. As I told you earlier in the video as well, the population of Canada is around 37 to 38 million. The population density is very low because of its huge size and the life expectancy is very good. The official languages that are spoken here are English and French. Around 86% people speak English and around 30% people know French very well. While in Germany, the population is more than double of Canada, 80 to 81 million and hence the population density is also very high. Life expectancy is slightly lower but still very good and also the official language is German. English is not the official language, however there is a big number of people who do speak English, around 56% and most of the people living in Germany actually know German. Okay, now talking about the crime index. So I've taken out a screenshot from numbeer.com and it says that in Toronto, the crime index is something around 40. Vancouver is a lot safer, around 36. And Calgary is even more safer, something around 34. While in the German cities, Berlin is around 41. And Frankfurt is also the same, but Munich is very safe. The crime index there is just around 17 but these numbers might be difficult to comprehend so just to give you a reference the crime index of delhi is 59 so you can understand that these cities even toronto and the cities of berlin and frankfurt are still a lot safer 40 does not mean that their crime index is very high so even toronto berlin frankfurt where the crime index seems to be pretty high in this screenshot are quite safe 
while Munich is obviously very safe. Also, Canada is a land of immigrants, so you would see people from all around the world in Canada, a lot of different cultures, a lot of different religions, a lot of different cuisines from around the world, all around Canada, but you won't see that much diversity in Germany, although you would see people from around the world in Germany as well, but because Canada has got a big number of immigrants, you would see much more diversity in there. Okay, now let's compare the cost of living of the two countries. Of course, it's very difficult to compare the two countries as such. So I've picked certain cities once again to compare them with each other. And for that, I've taken you to numbia.com, a very useful website. You can just visit and compare the cost of living of any two cities around the world. So first we'll compare Vancouver with Berlin. Then we'll compare Toronto with Frankfurt. And then after that, we'll compare Calgary with Munich. So over here, we can see that you would need around $5,500 in Berlin to maintain the same standard of life that you can have with $6,500 in Vancouver. Mind it, we're talking in the Canadian dollar terms here. So clearly, Vancouver is more expensive here. You would need $1,000 more to maintain the same standard of life. Let's see about the other cities. So here it seems that Toronto and Vancouver are quite similar in terms of the cost of living so you would need six thousand five hundred dollars in toronto as well for a certain standard of life but frankfurt is slightly expensive than berlin and here you would need around six thousand dollars so the difference is less but still the cost of living in toronto is higher now the last comparison is between calgary and munich here it's totally different you would need around six thousand seven hundred dollars in munich for a certain standard of life in comparison to five thousand five hundred dollars in Calgary. Now if you notice Munich is the most expensive city out of the six cities that we have compared here. So obviously it depends where you want to live, which city you want to choose and it would depend on your standard of life as well. If you want to go in detail this website is very useful. If you want to check out the rents in the downtown in other areas, how much would it actually cost you to buy a property, you can just check everything there in this website. The website is named as numbio.com. Before we discuss the next factor which is weather, let me take a moment to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative people offering thousands of inspiring classes on topics including design, photography, web development, marketing, animation and the classes on so many other topics as well. Being a YouTuber, it's very important for me to learn good editing and I've been doing so by the classes given by Ali Abdul, one of my favorite YouTubers. Not just that, I've been using this platform to improve my productivity as well because doing a job and doing YouTube at the same time is certainly not easy. So I've also been taking classes again from Ali Abdul. He's got some great lessons on productivity, especially for creators. So this has been really helpful for me. I'll provide a link in the description box below. The first thousand subscribers to click on that link will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium Membership so that you can try it for free and explore your creativity. Okay, let's discuss about the weather of these two countries. Of course, when we talk about countries like Canada, it's very crucial to talk about the weather. So here I've listed out some of the cities both from Canada and Germany. Some of the famous cities in Canada have chosen Toronto, Vancouver and uh, Calgary and for Germany I've mentioned Berlin, Frankfurt and Munich. We'll talk about both the cold weather and the summer. So in the cold weather in the months of January, February we'll see the minimum temperature and in the months of June and July in the summer we'll see the maximum temperature. So in Toronto the minimum temperature is around minus 18 degrees Celsius. In Vancouver it's a lot better around minus 8 and in Calgary, it's a lot worse. Actually, it's around minus 32 degrees. In Berlin, it's a lot better because it's only minus 3 degrees. In Frankfurt, it's minus 2. And in Munich, it's also similar. It's around minus 4. Now, this is the temperature from 2020. So, you can get an idea of the weather in both the countries. Talking about summers, in Toronto, it's around 35 degrees. In Vancouver, around 30. Calgary is a lot colder, around 28 degrees. Berlin, around 24 degrees, Frankfurt 26 and Munich at 24. So clearly we can see that Canada has got more harsh temperatures whether we talk about summers or we talk about winters. While in Germany we'll see a lot better weather. Apart from that you'll see winds in almost all of these cities but more in 
the three cities of Germany and you would also see rain all year round mostly in the months of summers. Similarly, you'd see that in Vancouver, it's a lot rainy all year round. So now when we have talked about the weather, let's talk about the other factor, which is immigration. Now, of course, this is a very wide topic. Things cannot be covered in a couple of minutes. It might take a couple of videos for me to explain this in detail. So in this video, we'll talk about the difference in the immigration on a high level, just to give you an idea of the difference between the two countries. Now, both the countries have got student visas. So if you are an international student and you want to pursue a higher education, you can apply for either of these countries student visas. They've got entrepreneur visas. So if you want to start up your company, if you want to provide employment to the people over there, if you want to do some business and you have a good amount of money in your account, so you have a good capital, you can apply for the startup visa or the entrepreneur visa in these countries. Now, if you're an international worker in Canada, you can apply for a work permit, but for that, you need to have a job offer. But there's something really good in Germany, something known as job seeker visa, which is valid for six months. You need to have five years of international experience, certain amount of money, very similar to proof of funds of uh, the Express Entry of Canada and some medical insurance as well in order to get that visa. But if you get that visa, you can go to Germany without a job offer, search the job there and then get another visa to work there for long. So that's something really good about Germany. If you want me to make a detailed video on the job seeker visa for Germany, please let me know in the comment section below. I would love to provide that information in a separate video. Now talking about the permanent residency. While in Canada, we have got federal and many provincial programs which actually do provide you the permanent residency of Canada. Very famous is the express entry. Whether you have the job offer or not, you can be in your home country and you can apply for the Canadian PR. You can get the Canadian PR even if you don't have the job offer or even if you haven't been to Canada ever. But in Germany, getting the permanent residency is not so easy. First of all, you need to know German, which is very crucial. There's a certain level of German you need to know. Then you need to have a job offer and you should have spent certain amount of time in Germany in order to get the German PR. Now again, this is a very wide topic guys. I cannot cover it in just a couple of minutes. So if you want me to make another video on this, this is a separate topic altogether. I can make another video, but you need to let me know in the comment section below. Now next is about the citizenship. So if you have spent three years or more in Canada, you would get the citizenship pretty easily. But to get the red passport, you need to spend more time as the permanent resident in Germany, which makes it slightly more challenging. Overall, talking about the power of the passports, German passport is the third most powerful passport. It allows visa free entries to 189 countries, while the Canadian passport is ninth most powerful passport in the world. It allows visa free entry to 183 countries, which is still not bad. Only six countries are less. So both these passports are very powerful when it comes to traveling around the world. Okay, now talking about the education. We'll talk both about the schools and the colleges or universities. So both of these countries do offer great education, international level of education for the students studying in schools, colleges or universities. But there are slight differences. For example, in Germany, language German is given a high priority, obviously because it's their official language. In Canada, it depends from one region to the other. In some regions like Quebec, French is given more importance, but in many other parts of Canada, English is given more importance and more of the curriculum would be in English. Now, the good thing is that both the countries do offer free education to the children in schools, whether it's elementary school or primary school, students are offered free education. Even if you work there on a work permit, your kid will actually get free education in public schools. The good thing about Germany is that it gives free education to international students as well. Guys, this might be a big surprise for you, but even if you are from India and you go to Germany to pursue your higher education in public universities or colleges, you would get free education. However, there would be nominal administration or certain other fees that would be involved, but that is very marginal in comparison to what you have to pay there in Canada. The fee for an international student in Canada is very high and it would not be wrong to say that education is now a big business in Canada. Even the Canadian government gets a lot of money from the international students. So they always boost 
international students pursuing their higher education in Canada. However, it is being said that the level of education in Canada is better than what it is in Germany. One point to note here is that in Germany you would be assessed towards the last of your semester in the exam or the test but while in Canada you would be assessed throughout the semester through your assessments, through different trainings that might be given to you, through assignments and also through tests and exams. So that is one of the key differences here. Apart from that, both the countries have got three colleges or universities in the top 100. So that is a good thing. While if you compare that with UK, which has got 18 colleges or universities and US, which has got 27 colleges or universities in the top 100, you would feel that these countries lag behind in the international level of education. But still, mostly the colleges and universities in Canada and Germany provide top level education. And not just education, your kids will also get ample amount of opportunities if they want to choose sports, if they want to choose some other career because they would get right training from their childhood itself so that they can excel where their interest actually lies. Okay, so that is it. I really hope that this comparison would help you choose the country where you want to immigrate. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please click the subscribe button. If you have any feedback, please put it down in the comment section below. And yes, do not forget to like this video and share it with your friends as well. Thanks again for watching this video.